All right. I finally watched Rise of Skywalker. I'm trying to figure out, you know, and sitting here, how do I start this video off? We'll start off with this. If you're not looking for spoilers, don't watch this video because I'm going to spoil the hell out of it. It's going to be a spoiler filled review because that's the only way I do reviews. I, I don't like, you know, we'll dance around stuff. Now I'm just going to tell you how it is. I think a good way to start this review off is this. So months ago, there was a leak that there was going to be a fleet of Star Destroyers and they were going to have Death Star technology on it. Like all of them are going to have Death Star capabilities. They can all destroy planets. And I thought that's ridiculous. There's no way that's true. In fact, I remember people were covering it and making, you know, in the thumbnail or their title, a leak so stupid. <laughs> it's probably true. Sure enough, it was true. <laughs> it was absolutely true. <laughs> <laughs> what a story, Mark. All of the leaks were true. Just about all the big ones that everybody was talking about. Some are, some are fake, like that script that was going around that everyone knew was fake. Really, like Anakin and Luke were saying, you did it. You did what we couldn't. That's fake. But most of the stuff, like the Wayfinder and this movie being about a MacGuffin and all this different stuff, absolutely true. The movie felt like it was just gobbled together. It just felt like, you know, we're just going from point A to B to A to B. There really wasn't that much of a narrative to it. It was, it was a mess. And I think that was what people got just from reading the leaks, that it was a, it was a mess. You can tell that they literally just rushed this movie and we're probably, I, I want to say that, you know, Doomcock's theories that this was being put together and cut up and reshot to hell. I want to say that he's probably 100% correct. You can tell it because it feels that way when you're watching it. It really does. But let's get into it. So there's a reason that I paused on this. This is from the trailer. This is, this is Leia and Ray hugging. Now to prepare for this movie, I spent the day because I had the day off watching Force Awakens and Last Jedi, and now this. So I literally spent the entire day watching Disney Star Wars. I feel like a mess. Like it was, it was a long day because of that. Man, those two movies, they didn't age very well. <laughs> they did not age very well at all. But I noticed something since I watched it so soon. This hug is the hug from Force Awakens between Leia and Rey. Now, the reason that they probably did that is because, well, I mean, they had to. Carrie Fisher, you know, God rest her soul, passed away. They had to do what they could to make that work. But it ended up kind of making the movie a mess. Uh, the way that she dies is really kind of forced and strange. Uh, so I'll go ahead and spoil that part. Like I said, there's spoilers all over this. She literally is like, you know, they used, I could tell they used somebody else to fill in for her. And they had that lady from the bar, Ma or whatever her name is. She was in Force Awakens with the big glasses. She's like, she's going to do what she can to reach Ben. And she hobbles away, lays down, and then while Ray and Ben, Kylo Ren, are fighting, uh, she goes, Ben. He turns around and is like, what? And then she dies. It was really strange. It was just like, well, let's just write it this way because that's literally all we can do. Uh, the, the CGI with her, however they did it, but her scenes from Force Awakens, it was really strange, especially like there was a moment where she hands – a lights like uh, Luke's lightsaber back to her, which I don't get because it was destroyed in Last Jedi, but now here it is, totally repaired, put back together. Don't know who did that because, well, I guess Leia did construct a lightsaber, so maybe she taught Rey how to do it. I don't know. She does call Leia Master. So Leia is literally her Padawan Jedi Master, and <laughs> it's just, you know, you could have kept Luke alive. There was no If they had just kept him alive, this would have been a totally different movie. Now, I will say the one thing they did right that I did like was the group dynamic, the camaraderie between Chewbacca, Finn, Poe, and Rey. They were literally together pretty much the entire movie except towards the end, and I liked that. They should have been doing that from the start. It made them seem more like, you know, a, a band of rebels together. That's how they should have been doing these movies instead of wasting them in Jedi in Jedi like islands and casinos and the last one they should have been doing something together 
that would have made this feel a little bit better. This didn't feel like the end of a trilogy, and that kind of is, I mean, it makes sense considering Disney never had a plan the entire time they were doing these movies. I think that's pretty obvious. The original director of Rise of Skywalker came out and said that, hey, uh, you know, there were no plans for the Emperor to come back in my script, but yet alone, here he is. So let me go over a little outline here, and then I'm going to get in some stuff that really made this movie trash. So it starts off, Ray's training. She's training with Leia. You know, they're doing their little thing on the island, and then... There's a mysterious message. Emperor Palpatine is back. Oh, no. So they got to find where he is. He's on Exegon or Exagon or whatever that planet is. And they got to track him down. But we don't know how to get there. Oh, lo and behold, there's stories of Luke Skywalker trying to track down that planet for some unknown reason. We don't know why, but he had to go there. So everyone gets together. We got to go find the, the Wayfinder, the MacGuffin. The plot device, which literally takes this movie in all kinds of different directions. So they go on the, the, the hunt for the, the Wayfinder MacGuffin. And they go to this other planet, the whole group here. They go there, and they're looking for it. But, oh, no, here comes the First Order for some reason because of the Force Bond. And they get attacked. Chewie gets picked up and taken to jail. <laughs> so they go on to... Uh, whatever the First Order Star Destroyers are called, they get him out, and, you know, a fight ensues. We get some stuff between Kylo and Rey. Then they end up going to one of the Endor moons where Death Star Rebel is. Uh, by the way, they get there because 3PO had to have his memory rebooted because, well, he's the only one that can translate it, but for some reason he's not allowed to speak Sith language. By the way, everyone seems to know what the Sith are. You know, we had no idea what the Jedi were or however that works. They're legends, but everybody knows about Sith and Sith languages and all this stuff. It, it's really stupid. So they find out they've got to go to the Endor moon, one of them. They go there. There's the Jedi throne room. Rey goes in there, meets with Kylo again. They have another fight again. Kylo crushes the Sith holocron. Don't worry, though. There's another one. Just pops up out of nowhere. They find, well, Ray finds it digging through some trash uh, for some reason. I th I'm just going to go dig over here for some reason. Oh, there it is. But while she's fighting Kylo Ren, she ends up uh, killing him and then bringing him back to life. That was the scene where Leia appears to him and goes, Ben. And then, uh, you know, she passes away. So, also, I want to point out that Ray uses Force Lightning by accident at one point in the film. It's just like, you know, so is that a birthright thing? Because she totally is Emperor Palpatine's granddaughter. Who, by the way, Emperor Palpatine, it was revealed that Snoke was a clone. He literally has Snoke's growing in vats where he's at. Like, spare Snoke's for some reason. It's like, why don't you just clone your own body from the start and put yourself in it like they did in the EU. Oh, wait, you know, we're not going to do that because, well, that would make too much sense. And you never had any plans to use him until this movie because you literally had no idea what to do. And it's like, hey, well, let's bring the Emperor back. That will really, that'll really get the old nostalgia pipes rolling. So anyway, the Emperor, uh, they never reveal how he's still alive, by the way. Never tell you. He just says, literally like the leak said, uh, yet, you know, I was dead, but yet here I am. Totally blow that off. Totally don't explain how, you know, where his kids were, like why he even has kids. He didn't even like, you know, that was never really explained at all. It's just, up oh, you used my granddaughter. You're my granddaughter. So she finally goes and meets with the emperor and it's revealed, you know, the emperor, he wants her to take over. He wants her to be queen, empress. Empress Palpatine, that's her birthright. And she needs to strike him down and become a Sith because that will automatically make her a Sith. And then he's going to transfer, you know, his being into her and they will become one or something. It's really kind of stupid. Doesn't really make much sense. But nonetheless, that's what they're going to do. And, and there's a whole, like, you know, church living with him or something. It's really strange. Really strange. So they're about to do that. And, you know, by the way, she was leading the entire resistance, rebellion or whatever to where he is. They show up. There's literally like an Avengers moment because all of the uh, the Outer Rim people 
show up, you know, the, the people that were hiding. By the way, Red, Wedge Alanis was one of them. I guess he's a coward. He doesn't show up until the final moment, you know, so I guess he was hiding out. Really, really nice way to treat him. So no one, no one showed up to the very end, and Ray's about to take him out. But, oh, wait, Ben Solo is back. He's been redeemed because, well, he has a memory and a vision of Han Solo who tells him to come back. So that whole report from Doomcock that Han Solo was coming back as a force ghost, uh, he did admit that wasn't entirely the case. It turns out it's just a vision. He was right again. Han Solo appears and helps redeem Ben Solo back. So Ben goes, and they face him together, but turns out that was a mistake. He ends up taking a life bond, from, like life force from them, rejuvenates himself, uh, for some reason throws Ben off of uh, the building or whatever the hell they're on, and then Ray and him fight. Ray pulls out two lightsabers because she has Luke and Leia's. And does a cross thing while, while he's shooting lightning at her. And for some reason, that's enough to shoot the lightning back on him. And he dies. And then she dies. I don't know why uh, the lightning never hit her. But I guess reflecting the lightning back with two lightsabers kills her. She never really gets stabbed or, or wounded or hit. Uh, it just takes her out because she took him out. I don't know why. They never explain that. But for some reason... She dies, and then Ben comes up, a.k.a. Kylo, comes up, transfers and heals her with a force healing, and then they kiss, and he dies. It literally makes no sense. It's as stupid as it sounds. Uh, by the way, they totally used force healing in Mandalorian in Episode 7, and they put that out the day before audiences could go see this movie to justify them being able to use force healing. I do believe that's the case. But I thought that was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, she she dies for literally no reason. It's like, well, I'm dead now. Like, he, he never hurt her because the lightning was hitting the dual lightsabers that she was holding. Made no sense. But whatever. I mean, the movie was obviously gobbled together. So that's pretty much it. Uh, she, they die, or Ben dies, uh, they have a little celebration with no really good music. By the way, the music in this movie is absolutely terrible. It's it's you know it's serviceable, I guess. I, I don't want to call John Williams terrible, but it's like he was just phoning it in, literally like he's done for the entire Disney trilogy. He's literally just phoned it in and gotten a paycheck. It's kind of amusing. I mean, even the prequels had scores you remember, like Duel of Fates, you know. You remember that song. That's one of the that's one of the greatest pieces in all of Star Wars. Despite what you think about the prequels, that song's badass. There's nothing badass about John Williams' score in all three of these movies. So that's pretty much it. They have a little party uh, to some pretty generic Star Wars cuts that you heard before. Nothing like you know the Return of the Jedi celebration, Yub Nub, or the the new one for the special edition. Uh, it's just really generic. It uh, doesn't really feel like it means anything. Uh, feel, it literally feels like everyone's there. Everyone's paid to party. <laughs> and it just doesn't feel right. So then she ends up going to Tatooine where she buries the two lightsabers. And uh, then for some reason, like a postcard picture, uh, Leia and Luke show up with big, gigantic, fake smiles. Literally like, you know, you could take them and put them on a Tatooine postcard. It's like, hey, wish you were here. <laughs> And they're watching Leia approving of her. She looks over at them and sees them. And uh, somebody asks her name. like, what's your name, lady? She's like, Ray. Ray Skywalker. And uh, she looks at the two sons and roll the credits. That is one big pile of shit. It's really a shame that this is how they decide to end all of these movies. Like, this is it. I got to say, like, I don't even know if I would say this is better than The Last Jedi. A lot of people are saying, well, at least it's it's better. It, it felt like a mess. Like, we're really just going from point A to B to C to D to get to the Emperor so we can have this cheap fight and he can talk a couple of times and you can have some nostalgia. Really, it just undermines everything that Luke and Anakin did in Return of the Jedi. He should have never been brought back. They really should have just taken an extra year to make a proper movie. Uh, it, it's just really sad. 
it just felt like a mess. It totally did feel like this movie was just slapped together last minute. You can tell that it was heavily reshot. And I find it funny that they're saying, you know, there was no test screenings. Oh, yeah? How did all of this get out? Because stuff that was being predicted months ago ended up being true. The Star Destroyers, like he has a fleet of Star Destroyers that all have Death Star technology on it. Hundreds of of Star Destroyers that he was just capable of building and putting Death Star ray guns on it. They literally do destroy a planet with one of them. It's really ridiculous. It feels like this was just like, I don't even know like how this got past anybody. It's really ridiculously bad. And it's sad to see that this is how you're going to take out the end of the Skywalker saga. I don't know why they're doing the end of the Skywalker saga. How are you going to do Star Wars and it not be in this galaxy? Then you're just doing a sci-fi movie. It makes no sense that this was called Rise of Skywalker either. It literally has nothing to do with Luke Skywalker other than the fact that they're following the plans at one point in the movie. It quickly changes. Uh, they're, they're literally following a map to get to some other planet. By the way, I can totally tell that in the original cut of whatever the hell this movie used to be, they were going to have a love story between Finn and Rey because the first part of the movie is Finn trying to tell her that he loves her. And then it's just forgotten about. Then it shifts over to Ray and Kylo falling in love. Like that's just totally thrown thrown to the wind. It's almost like they had shot too much of that stuff to cut it out. So he's talking about it for a minute and then it's just forgotten about. Like, nope, well, guess we're just gonna forget about that plot line. We're gonna just hope, you know, maybe if we have a couple more explosions here in this other scene, you won't notice or care. <laughs> it's it's a mess. It really is. And it's a shame that such a great series of films, I'm talking about the originals, not the Disney stuff, is attached to this. Uh, this is a complete mess. After watching all three now in one day, uh, they literally, there's no, there's no thread that carries all three of these movies together. They, they, it's, it's very apparent after watching this that they had no clue what they were doing. Even though they had an outline by George Lucas, like they he didn't they didn't have scripts. They had an outline of what they could do for three movies. Uh, they decided to throw that away to give us this cobbled up garbage. It's like they thought if we put Skywalker's name in the title and we bring the Emperor back, uh, maybe you know we can make people love this movie. Uh, we'll just we'll just make her say she's Ray Skywalker. That way the name lives on. It's just it, it's really sad. It's sad. I'm I'm kind of sad to be honest, that this is how it all ends. You know, I think back to, you know, when I was young and wanted to see this movie. I wanted to see this trilogy happen. And, you know, we had to wait so long for a sequel trilogy, and this is what we got. Literally a giant turd. It's really sad. It really is. And like I said in my Chapter 7 Mandalorian review, uh, it's really sad that I care more about that little green baby and some dude in a helmet that barely talks. I have never even seen his face in the show. I care more about them as characters than I do every single character that's been in all three of these movies. It's hard to even care about Luke or Han because they turn Han into a deadbeat dad and Luke into some hermit coward. And then they realized they messed up and thought they could just jumble up a bunch of shit and throw in some stupid plots and nostalgia, throw nostalgia everywhere in every way possible and put Luke Skywalker's name in the title and think that it would be possible for us to just happily enjoy this. You can't just throw a bunch of shit together and think it's going to be good. The movie was a mess. You can tell that it was shot several times and jumbled together. This was probably like four movies like thrown together. It's like Robotech. This is like Star Wars Robotech. Like they were taking a bunch of Macross uh, shows and and like gobbling it up and trying to make a movie out of it. It's terrible. And I know some people are going to disagree with me. That's fine. But go back and watch this in a year. Try and watch it again. We'll see how this movie stands up. It's not good. It's not woke like Last Jedi was. This movie had like one moment. It's like, well, 
you know, we can have two ladies kiss. Maybe that'll keep the blue check marks happy. They just had it in there. <laughs> like it, they just put that in there. Maybe, maybe that, that'll keep the that'll keep the the critics happy. <laughs> Didn't work. The trashing your movie. And I gotta say, all the critics that are sticking to why this movie's bad, that are on the points of how it's just a mess. They're right. It's a mess. I, I agree with the critics for once. This movie is a big pile of poop. And I think that's a good place to leave it. This movie is a soulless cash grab. They tried to do whatever they could by throwing things at a wall, and it just didn't work. And I'd be shocked if this movie made over a billion. In fact, it might be the next Solo. I don't think it's going to... I could be wrong, and it probably still will, but I'd be shocked if this movie made a billion dollars because word travels fast, and a lot of people walked out of that theater looking kind of disappointed. They really did. So anyway... That's pretty much it. Give me your thoughts. If you saw the movie, what did you think about it? I'd like to hear what you thought. If you disagreed with me, if you agree with me, let me hear what you think about it. I want your I want your comments. Remember, comments and likes really help push a video in the algorithm, so please consider leaving those and uh, sharing the video. That's helpful. And that's it. Make sure you're still subscribed. Subscribe if you're new. Hit that notification bell, and I will see you on the next one. Peace. Also, if you want to help support the channel, check out my Teespring store. There's a link in the description. You can find some merchandise in there that you might want to check out. Also, take a moment. Make sure you're still subscribed to the channel. Uh, There's something going on right now, and they've been unsubscribing people. So just take a second and double check on that and subscribe if you're new.